Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have another test um, piece of equipment from our friends over at Zoe, Zotec Tools so thank you very much for sending me that, it is much appreciated and we'll get on and we'll give it a test and we'll see what we think of it but before we start don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website microchips.net and let's get started so what we have here is another LCR tweezers bridge meter. Now I presume this is the upgraded one from a model from a couple of years ago. Just trying to focus in on the manual there for you. It's got lots of features that, we'll, that we will go through. And it seems they have improved on a couple of things that was uh, missing from the previous model. So let's have a look what we get in the box. So again, we get a nice protective carrying pouch. And inside there, we have the, um, the piece of test equipment. So this is the Zoe ZT-MD2. We have a USB-C to A. We have a calibration source here should you need to calibrate the meter and it's also as a good test source as well so we will be using that and there is the meter now it's a good improvement from the last model we've got a nice metal body on this one and it, feel, it feels a lot feels a lot better and it feels a lot nicer in the hand as well so anyway there it is the zt md2 LCR tester with its plated tweezers. So let's fire it up and have a look. So we're greeted with a nice big screen. I think it's bigger than last year's model. So we have auto ranging, we have resistance, capacitance, inductance, diode test and continuity, voltage test up to 32 volts. And we have this scan feature, we have a signal generator, and then we have back to automatic. And if we press one of the buttons as well, we can go into the menu system and we can change our test frequency and test voltages. And we can also data hold it by pressing the power button. I mean, there it is, there it's USB-C connection. Now, as you may have noticed, the orientation is automatic on this one so no matter which way you hold it the orientation is always correct which didn't work on the on the first one so that's the first one we turn it upside down and it didn't do it on that one so yeah marked improvement and as you can see there's a bigger screen on there and there's a lot more features on the um, on the ZT2 compared to the ZTMD1. Now I didn't actually spot the continuity beforehand, and it's hidden in the diode test on this one because I was scrolling through looking for continuity, thinking that the continuity had disappeared, but no, it's it's there. Serves me right for not scrutinising the manual. So, let's have a play with it. Let's see what it can do. So we've got a nice, nice sharp um, LCD screen there. There's our menu system. So there's our direction, backlight, bleep volume, auto off timers, test speed. I'm not sure what the model is. We can select or deselect the modules that we want to um, have read and we have a calibrate function there that we can use to calibrate it so let's put in our test source and as you can see this thing reads really quickly you put it on and the reading is there even in automatic mode it's really good it's really, really fast on the reading. 
So I was really impressed with that. That's really good. And it's obviously I don't have a thousand pound um, reference source. But you know, if it says 10 ohm and it reads 10 ohm, or if it says 100 ohm and it reads 100 ohms, that's good enough. You know, we're not bothered about 0 0.000 of an ohm. But as for reading, it's very quick, very impressed. So let's try it against my very expensive test source board. So we'll just go across these. So 10 ohm again. There's a 100 ohm. And there's a 1k. And there's a 10k. This one should be 100k. Yep, fantastic. And we'll go over to capacitors. Notice we're still on automatic and we're reading capacitors straight away. So 1 nan, 10 nan, 100 nan. I think this should be 1 microfarad. Yep, close enough. And a 10 microfarad. Yep, as you can see, this reads really quick. Very impressed with that. So let's try some inductors. So let's switch to inductance. Let's try some inductors on this filter board. So these are reading when we can get it in focus. They've got 221, so it should be 220 micro henrys on these. So let's put our meter across it. I'm just trying to get it actually connected because it's a little bit awkward with this surface mount. But yep, 220 micro henrys read that perfectly. And again, yep, absolutely fine. Obviously reading inductors in circuit, same with reading capacitors in circuit, can be a little bit hit and miss sometimes. If there's special, especially if there's other components across them. So yeah, that's a hundred mic, and this one should be a thousand mic. Yeah. Now, if there's a if there's an inductor or a resistor across the capacitor, it will throw the readings off. So always be wary about reading things in a circuit. And there's our continuity test in the diode test. So nice and quick. So we'll put it on. Well, we're on diode test. We're just going across this diode. Obviously, if the diode's short, it's going to bleep. But there's our reading across the diode. And obviously, there's a capacitor across there as well. And there we go. Very nice. So let's try this surface mount resistor. As you can see, there's a capacitor across this one. So our readings are well up the wall with that one, but that's not a problem. So let's try voltage. So output voltage, 13 and a half volts. It's only a filter board this. So there's about, there's about 13 volts going into it. 13.5, well, 13.05 coming out. Yep, it's good enough. So we have a scan feature here, selectable on the menu. And I can actually get it in focus. And what it does is it scans the range of frequencies or test frequencies and shows you different readings based on the, the test frequency. And obviously you can change the test voltage as well. So this is definitely a nice addition. So you can see how your component responds to different test frequencies. So let's have a look at the signal generator. So there's our signal generator, outputting a sine wave, three volt peak to peak, and the scope saying three volt peak to peak, and we're at one kilohertz. So let's change the output. So we've got a noise feature, interesting. So I suppose that's supposed to be full wave and half wave rectification 
sam uh, sample. That's quite an interesting waveform, the triangle, and we've got a pulse width modulation um, one as well with a variable duty cycle. So some quite interesting features there. So we'll alter the duty cycle on the PWM, and as you can see, it's now changing the duty cycle. Yeah, quite an interesting feature. So it's nice and easy to use this meter. And now we can change the frequency as well. So we'll change the frequency of the actual sine wave generator. And we will adjust the oscilloscope to match it. So, like I said, this does resistance, capacitance, inductance, diode test, voltage up to 32 volts. And yeah, it's, it's, it's very good. It's very good. Nice and clear. Yeah. I'm just adjusting the time base on the scope there. And yeah, it's definitely um, interesting to have a, have a signal generator in this. So yeah, I've not found any firmware updates for this yet. I'll keep an eye out for that. But there we have it, the Zoe ZT-MD2 LCR Tweezer Tester from our friends at Zoe Zotec Tools. Again, thank you very much for sending me this to look at. It's definitely an interesting piece of equipment and a, uh, an improvement from the first version. Anyway, hope you like this short video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website, microchips.net. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.